So just recapping, here's what our sacra mirror looks like, and it contains the thin filaments and the thick filaments, the thin filaments in blue and the thick filaments in red. So let's get a portion of this thick filament, and this is what it looks like. And it contains many myosin heads, usually in doubles, as you can see. And myosin, the protein myosin, makes up the thick filaments. So each of these heads are part of a myosin molecule, you can say. And if we take a zoom or a portion of the thin filaments, this is what the thin filament looks like. And it's a bit more complicated in that the, the actin proteins are like twisted together like a helix. And there are also other structures such as tropomyosin, which actually blocks the binding site of actin here, shown in green. And we also have troponin here in orange, which allows calcium to bind to it. And we'll see the, why these other structures are here. But essentially, if we zoom into one myosin molecule, here we have one myosin molecule. And the myosin, the myosin proteins actually wrap around together to form the helix as well. And that is why we have two, two myosin heads in, 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 in duplicates. And the myosin head contains two important sites. One site is for ATP, so an ATP binding site. And also the top here has an actin binding site, so it can bind to the actin proteins of the thin filament. So here we have the thin filament with actin proteins. And the actin, uh, the thin filament, is made up of actin subunits here. But an important note to make from this structure is that myosin heads can only bind to actin subunits if tropomyosin is moved. And as you can see, the tropomyosin has moved um, here. And it's moved because calcium binds onto the, the, this orange structure, the troponin. And so let's look in, at this in more detail. So myosin heads can only bind to actin if tropomyosin is moved. So here we have the, the thin filaments consisting of many actin subunits. And we have uh, the structure in orange here, troponin. And tropomyosin, as shown, is blocking the binding of myosin onto actin. And here we have two duplicates of myosin heads shown in red. And it wants to bind to uh, the actin subunits. And when ATP comes along, ATP will bind onto the ATP binding site of the myosin. And this causes myosin to, wanting, to want to bind to actin subunits. But it can't because of tropomyosin. Because tropomyosin blocks the uh, the actin's binding site, preventing the binding um, of myosin heads onto actin subunits. And so, through if we introduce calcium, if calcium comes along from somewhere magically, calcium will bind to the troponin, the orange part, moving tropomyosin out of the actin uh, and myosin connection. And so, here we have the myosin heads again, and it has... ATP has been used and it has ADP, so it has energy. And here we have the actin, the thin filaments with the actin subunits. And, and as you can see, calcium has bound onto the troponin. And this has caused tropomyosin to move away from the myosin binding site on the actin subunits. And so here we have tropomyosin moving away from the myosin binding site, which allows myosin heads to attach to the actin subunits. And so myosin heads can bind onto the actin subunits because tropomyosin has moved away from the binding site of myosin on actin. And so because of this, this enables the myosin molecules in red to pull the thin filaments uh, towards the center of the sacromere, towards, this, towards the M line. So it's pulling, pulling it. And this is why it needs ATP. And when this occurs, Essentially, when myosin moves, actin uh, will generate tension and contraction in muscle, essentially. So again, myosin will pull actin towards the M line, and myosin itself will then move towards the Z line. And what does this mean? Let's look at a big picture. Let's look at, firstly, a relaxed state when nothing is happening, when no calcium and no ATP is, is around. So here we have a sacromere. Uh, which is in between, which is which is from a Z disc to another Z disc, and we have M line in the middle, and this is a relaxed sacromere in a relaxed state, and so when ATP and calcium comes along, this will cause myosin heads 
to pull thin filaments towards the center of the sacromere, towards the M line. So if you can imagine, here we have a, we have, we have, here we have a co fully contracted sacromere, and this is in a tense state, let's just say. And so in a fully contracted sacromere, uh, the myosin heads will pull the thin filaments towards the center of the sacromere, towards the M line. And so because of this, the sacromere will become shorter. And this is known as a sliding filament theory. And the sliding filament theory states that each sacromere shortens the thin, uh, as the thin filaments slides closer together between the thick filaments, so that the Z discs are pulled closer together. So what this means is that essentially the Z discs are coming close together like so. And this is what contraction looks like in the in a intramolecular level. So now let's zoom into this relaxed sacromere and look at the full picture of the sliding filament theory. Please click on the link to look at the sliding filament theory. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and share. Thank you all.